give it up for those students. Good night. Good job. Thank you. And if you don't think that phone that they dropped is a big deal, I got news for you, it is. And they don't, we don't understand it as adults, so we can't expect the kids to understand it. So, hey, great job. Thanks again. If you're part of Young and Brave, raise your hand. Yeah, anybody else? Look at that. Give it up for the kids. Man. So, hey, my name's Cody. I'm the youth pastor here at the Way Church. Thank you, Pastor Johnny and Heather, for uh, their leadership. Give it up for them. Man, we got, we got great, great, great pastors. So, I'm going to tell some of, you know how Johnny tells those super funny jokes? I got some. Um, why, why do fish live in salt water? Because pepper water makes them sneeze. Martre, you like that? Uh, what's a pirate's favorite fish? Arctic cod. No? Okay. If you can think of a better fish joke, let me know. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm Cody. I got a picture up here. It's my wife, Megan. Um, yeah, she's definitely the better part of um, us. She's, she's amazing. So Judah's the little one in my arms, and Owen is that little guy at the bottom. Um, I'm raising two WWE fighters, um, two kids that are picky on what they eat, and, um, yeah, they just like to fight each other all day long. So um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple that usually sits right over here first service, but they're gone today. David and Kathy, um, they're from Alaska, and David came to me one time, you know him, David came to me and he said, man, I just want to let you know that I was a part of a church plant in the 70s, and um, there was a youth just revival just exploding there, and he said, when I see the students come up here to the altar, you know, during the week, uh, on Sundays, it brings me to tears, and I didn't even cry at my dad's funeral. So, students, when you come up and do stuff like that, you're leading. You don't understand it. You may not get the weight of it. You probably don't, but you are leading adults, so thank you for that. So, we have some statistics today. Uh, the message is called Keeping It Real. Um, if you can throw that up. Gen Z, which is 8 through 28 years old. Um, the Barna Group characterizes Gen Z as the first truly post Christian generation with only 4% adhering to a biblical worldview. Uh, a biblical worldview is where you build your foundation, everything you do, your decisions you make, everything on the Word of God, and that you believe that the entire Bible is true. Uh, moral reasoning peaks at age 10, and by age 16, 90% of our morals and values are formed. 83% of Christians give their life to Jesus between the ages of 4 and 14. I know you've heard Pastor Johnny talk about the youth Youth, you know, 7th through 12th grade, but then also way cool kids. Like, my kids are in way cool kids. And last year, Owen was three, and he shared the gospel with me because of a, like a, uh, a creative pinwheel type thing that they built. Um, so I'm super thankful that we have, a, you know, an area that teaches them um, at such an early age because that's huge. By the time a person reaches age 19, so after they've graduated, the chance of them becoming a Christ follower is only 6%. So, go to that next one. 40 hours is the average amount of time the church, us, has in a given year to influence a child's life. 3,000 hours is the average amount of time a parent has in a given year to influence a child's life. Families, 5% attend church every week, 25% attend church every other week, and 70 attend church once a month. So that tells me time with our kids is short, okay? So we have to pour in truth immediately, and that's why 
Way Cool Kids is so important. And then you go to the youth, which is 7th through 12th grade. I mean, we, we preach the gospel. We tell them. I mean, we're preaching to them uh, because we want to raise that number. It is more common today to be less Christian and more confused about moral and, and, and just every decision in, in their life. They are more confused about it. So it challenged me as a father, as an adult, um, why is that number so low? Like, what are we doing? What are we not doing? What have we not done? Um, did we fail them? So Pastor Johnny told me a long time ago, like, if, if, if you feel God speaking to you, you feel something, you need to, you know, you need to take it seriously. And one night, we, I woke up probably around 2 o'clock, and, and I felt God, you know, saying, hey, this is a great message and I want you to, you know, write it down. And that, this was like three months ago. And then Senior Sunday, it's a, it's a great day for Senior Sunday. So how do we keep it real? The first thing we do is admit the truth. So Romans 3.23, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Students, you're sinners, okay? Car mechanic, you're a sinner. Anybody like Patrick Mahomes? Any Chiefs fans? No? Woo! He's a sinner. Did you know that? Okay. Uh, Taylor Swift, T. Sweezy? Sinner. For real. Okay? (laughs) Donald Trump, sinner. Joe Biden, sinner. Sinner. Anybody remember Billy Graham? Which, he he still got phenomenal messages. He is past, but they have all the classics, so they're great. But yes, Billy Graham, sinner. Me, Working at a church, sinner. You, sinner. Everyone is a sinner in need of a savior. Admit that. That's where you start, is admitting that. Um, I didn't grow up in church. I was thinking this morning, um, I believe there was two times from the time I was zero to 19 that I remember going to church and actually going to a church service like on a Sunday morning. Um, So I didn't grow up in church. And after junior high and high school and, you know, a bunch of bad worldly decisions, um, I was like, there's got to be, there's got to be more purpose in life. There's got to be something more than just chasing this nonsense. And uh, so I went to this old country church that my grandparents went to and I met Megan um, and she instantly fell in love and um, just facts. Um, But... uh, yeah, so she invited me to a Christian concert. It was February 14th, 2006. Anybody know Casting Crowns? Yeah. It was Casting Crowns. Somebody was at that concert. They, were, you were at that concert when I got saved? No. Somebody was there when I was Chuck and Debbie. Anyway, um, we went to a Casting Crowns concert, and there's a preacher there, and he's, he's preaching. And, and uh, I just remember, man, it, it was like I was the only one in the room, and... and Right then, I knew that I was broken, and I admitted that I was a sinner, and I accepted Jesus into my heart. So, um, man, that's why we ask the students. That's why we ask adults. When, give me your salvation story. Like, when did, do you remember God, you know, knocking on the door and and you opening that? So, um, Matthew 7, 3 through 5, Jesus is talking. He says, and why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Natural human tendency is to look past the log in our own and and point out the shortcomings. I know when me and Megan, sometimes we argue and she's the stubborn one of both of us, and actually I'm both stubborn, but uh, we're both stubborn, but I will look past the log in my eye to point out something. I mean, it's just natural, and I know it's natural because of my two and four-year-old boys who, Owen comes running in the living room the other day, and he's like, "Uh, Judah threw a toy at me, and so I'm, I'm like, all right, so we'll go talk to Judah, and he doesn't really say much except like mommy, daddy, Johnny, Benny, um, just a couple things, Nana. But I'm like, hey, what's going on? And he's like, well, we got out. Bubba threw a dump truck at me. And I'm like, Owen, oh, you literally 
didn't tell us that. You, you naturally just went around that part of the story just to point out his flaw. So I know it's natural, and it's, it's something we gotta, we gotta battle, you know? So we don't wanna be like Adam, hiding among the trees. We wanna be like David. David, if you read Psalms, David, you know, he, he was, the Bible says he was after, a man after God's own heart, but he's up, he's down, he's, he's praising God, he's struggling. So we want to be, we want to be genuine, okay? Thought two, how do we keep it real? We believe the truth. Romans three twenty five. for God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. Anybody ever heard of the verse John 3, 16? Okay, we're gonna, it's going to be on the screen. We're going to all read it together. You ready? For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have ever or eternal life. Yes. Jesus loves you, right? I don't, I don't know who, who I'm talking to, but Jesus loves you right in your junk, right in your, your nastiness. He loved me right in my junk and right in the sin and everything that I didn't even know was, you know, keeping me from him. He loves you right there. Pastor Johnny says a lot that this is, this is a hospital for the hurting, okay? Um, man, we're all broken. I don't care who you are. Um, we, we struggle with, and we're all human, so we struggle with that, and we battle that, and we're battling the flesh and the spirit constantly. How do we keep it real? Confess the truth. 1 John 1, 8 through 10. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Verse 10, if we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. When we confess that sin, we are being honest with ourselves, with God. Like, Owen, if, if like, he comes and confesses, hey, man, I, I you know, I, I threw this, you know, dump truck at, at Judah's face. I'm gonna be upset, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna appreciate the confession. I'm gonna appreciate the truth. We gotta confess that truth, okay? And we find relief after we do that. How do we keep it real? Catch and release the truth. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. How many people, if, if you are comfortable raising your hand, are a Christian and have questioned their purpose? Okay, good, good, good. I've done it. Um, that, that's our first purpose right there, okay? That's your purpose. When you go to school, you wanna tell people about Jesus. When you go to your work, you wanna tell people about Jesus. When you go into the world, you wanna tell people about Jesus, okay? We wanna study the Bible and become a disciple. Um, I know that word sounds scary, but we can disciple somebody if we just are one step ahead. Pastor Johnny uses like a, like a ladder illustration you don't need to know every verse of the Bible. You don't need to know all the Greek and all that. You just need to know a little bit more than the next guy so you can take him along or her the journey and to learn more about Jesus and who he is. Because remember, 4% is in a biblical worldview right now, and that's scary. So how do we do better? First, we love God. Okay, we put living for Jesus first in our life. Pastor Johnny talked about the first 15. Worship for five minutes, uh, read your Bible for five minutes, and pray for five minutes. I challenge you to start there and do it for two weeks. 
in two weeks and then take notes and be like, okay, how am I responding to my spouse? How am I responding to my kids? How am I responding at work? How am I responding overall? I promise you, if you do it sincerely and seek God, you are going to see a difference. You're, gonna, you're, you're just going to be different, okay? Love others like Jesus loves you. And the kicker, forgive others like Jesus forgave you. I don't know about you, but I can love people really well. Um, it's hard to forgive sometimes. And listen, Jesus forgives us, and we got to forgive just like that. So you want to you want to you want to be a disciple. You want to you want to teach somebody. Want you love them like Jesus loved them, and forgive them like Jesus forgives. How do we do better? We listen to God. We never stop praying. Always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. There's an illustration Pastor Johnny uses, and like Braylon, I can call Braylon, and I don't have to tell Braylon, hey, it's Cody. Because of the relationship that me and Braylon have, he's going to be like, hey, what's up, Cody? Because we've talked, right? We've, we've, we've spent time together. You want to hear from God? You want to know that it's his voice? Spend some time with God. How are you going to know if you don't, if I don't spend time with him, I'm not going to know what his voice sounds like. So it goes back to sowing and reaping. What are you reaping and what are you sowing, okay? How do we do better? We live for God. The local church is the hope of the world. The local church is the hope of the world. This right here, the local church, is the hope of the world. When you come to church, don't just come to church. Serve. You know, join the dream team. Join a small group. Lead a small group. I mean, we have areas that you can join parking or way cool kids, young and brave, worship. I mean, there is countless countless spots for you to get plugged in and when you get plugged in man something changes when you're when you are serving God and serving his people I mean it is just something it's it's awesome raise your hand if you serve yeah I mean how far off is that right right you want to be more like Jesus love the local church Jesus died for the church so, I mean, you want to be more like Jesus? That's an easy way. Love the local church. When you come into church, you come in, we come in expecting something to happen. Every single Sunday, every Wednesday, we are expecting, this is not just something we just flippantly put together just because we have to, because it's Sunday. No, we are intentional, and we are expecting God to do something at his church. So, we are going to do a little experiment. Ryan, can you come up here? We're going to share the gospel with our neighbor, okay? So, in your seats, there is some gospel cards. They're a green card. There you go. And um, listen, this is the perfect place to do it. So, we're going to put a countdown on the screen of a minute, and you are going to share the gospel with your neighbor because we want you to be able to share it in here. That way, you can go share it out there. Okay, so throw that countdown up and we're going to do it. All right, how was that? Was it, was it terrible? It was fun, right? 
Listen, you're in a bad mood. He, Pastor Johnny said the other day, go share Jesus. Literally, I did that the other day. I was in a foul mood. I, I'm just, I'm just preaching. Hey, I was, I was in a bad mood, and somebody, I did share Jesus, and it changed my outlook. So, um, yeah, take those cards. What are you doing? Take those cards and, and, yeah. No, he's not. What do you think? Yeah, I put him back. Listen, y'all are more worried about this goldfish than your neighbor that doesn't know Jesus. I'm serious. Y'all more worried about this goldfish than friends at school. You think I'm kidding? Y'all's more worried about this little goldfish. He ain't little, but you, you... He's fat, but you're more worried about this goldfish than the person that you haven't forgiven that may not go to heaven, that may be going to hell. I'm serious. Thanks, Ryan. Listen... Your next life is your best life, okay? It's not this worldly life. It's the eternal life. Why aren't we sharing that with everybody? Why? Don't we want to get that number up? Who, who doesn't have kids but wants kids? Okay? I'll, not for a long, long time, okay? Not y'all. Not y'all. Okay? Not till you're 40. But listen, I got a two- and four-year-old. I want that number up. I don't, want, I don't want my kids to be 15 and the number be 1% of that generation carries a biblical worldview. What are we doing? Like, what are we doing? 